Good morning, Mary, and uh, thanks for joining me for for a discussion on on the ESG today. Um, good morning, Ronan. Thanks for having me. It's it's good to be here. You're welcome. You're welcome. I was hoping we could kick off maybe with a a broad update on where we are at a global level. I mean, without that, ESG is is probably without question the hottest regulatory topic right now um, in the US, Americas, Europe, Asia Pac, EMEA, you know, it's it globally it's it's it, it's a hot topic. Um, and maybe you could let us know where we sit from just where 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 that kind of global position is right now. There's been a couple of updates um, around the world in, in recent months. Okay. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, at a high level, if we start with the EU, which of course has gotten the most attention because of uh, its sustainable finance action plan and the steps that the European Union has taken there. So we've seen progress under the SFDR. Uh, we, we've had the, uh, of course, the first date of compliance back on March 10th, but there are further developments that we can uh, discuss in detail. What's also happening in EU in the EU at uh, at a high level is that the the green taxonomy is uh, is taking shape. So we've seen the the first set of technical screening criteria uh, being issued um, by the European Commission that covers climate change uh, uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation. Uh, and we've seen the announcement um, of a uh, revamping of the non-financial reporting directive to uh, to be uh, rebranded as the corporate sustainable finance uh, disclosure. So there are lots of changes uh, coming uh, in the EU. Uh, I would say yeah, now we need to, of course, talk about the UK as a separate uh, region. And there we've seen the, uh, the U that the UK is taking steps to include the asset management industry uh, in full um, as for disclosures under the uh, the TCFD, the Tax yeah. Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures. And so they've, there's a roadmap to uh, to cover the entire asset management industry in the in the coming years, and then of course the uh, the new administration in the EU uh, in the United States has brought um, uh, with it a lot of focus and activity around ESG. Uh, the uh, the SEC the SEC in particular has been very active. So we've seen. Uh, the appointment of a senior policy advisor on climate and ESG issues. The SEC has just established a uh, tax force on, on ESG. Uh, we've seen uh, the issuance of a risk alert around, uh, e uh, around ESG, the highlighting uh, potential uh, uh, enforcement issues. Um, yeah, there's just a lot happening. Um, yeah, at quite a high, quite a high yeah. level. So, you know, the EU is definitely uh, it's definitely at the forefront when I think when it comes to the how comprehensive the regulation uh, is, but uh, I think the U.S. in particular is uh, a region to really is to to really pay attention to because uh, I mean I've just I've covered just quite, kind of quickly some of the three developments, but um, oh, if we look outside of the SEC, yeah. there's also uh, the Department of Labor. Um, last year, there were a couple of controversial rule changes under the old administration, uh, and those changes are being um, are being reviewed as a priority by uh, this administration as well. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot happening, Ronan. Definitely. Yeah, no, I can. See that, that's that's fairly obvious. All right, that, that when you you go through so many different things that are going on in U.S., U.K., Europe, um, you really get a flavor for the. The velocity and volume of change is 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 intense uh, in the, and quite and quite extreme. Um, if we focus in on Europe for a little bit, I know that a lot of people are what I would call date watching. Um, we had an RTS uh, uh, a few weeks ago, a good few weeks ago, um, but yet effective or compliance dates. While while the RTS mentioned dates, there there seems to be kind of question marks maybe around them and maybe how different people might be waiting for for say the the taxonomy and the CSDR to, to kind of merge at some point. Um, what what's can you give us yeah. into that and maybe what people how we should maybe be reacting or preparing to to respond yeah. here? Yeah I think that's a good question because that those those days that timing really will drive uh, the the internal compliance uh, mm -hmm. agenda for, for firms. So um, 
looking at the SFDR, what we are waiting for right now is the, the final uh, version of regulatory technical standards around the specific disclosures for Article 8 and Article 9 products, as well as the specific firm um, or entity level uh, disclosures. Those will be coming out in a in a um, in an RTS that is scheduled, I would say, for uh, be the beginning of the summer, mm. um, early July, just probably just before the summer holidays. The timing there is um, is actually really important and crucial as to the exact date um, that the RTS com comes out, because uh, part of the disclosures that are covered there by that RTS uh, <clears throat> relate to periodic disclosures under Article 11 of the SFDR that um, potentially uh, will require the collection, would require the collection of data now already before the RTS is uh, in effect. And to deal with that, um, that potential problem, the the ESAs have suggested uh, that um, firms, of course, look to the draft RTS for guidance, but we know that that's not a, a final document, so that puts you kind of in a difficult position. And they've also proposed to the commission that the date for the periodic uh, disclosures under the RTS be um, pushed back uh, by a year if we don't get the, fi the commission's final endorsement before, uh, before June 30th. So we're waiting to see exactly uh, how the commission responds uh, to that proposal. So that, that timing is, is, is quite important. Um, related to that is, uh, is that we have these entity level disclosures, the firm disclosures, the yeah. principal adverse impact statements um, that has also gotten a lot of attention. And um, our, it looks like um, that the RTS will go into effect um, in any event by January 1st of 2022, which means that data under the um, under the RTS for the entity level, firm level disclosures will need to be uh, collected as of January 1st already. So firms need to be preparing themselves in any event for um, for for those the, the larger asset management firms that are that would be in scope and any asset managers that decide that they want to uh, comply uh, with that aspect of the SFDR. Uh, and those disclosures will come due in June of 2023. But the first yeah. reference year is 2022. So that's on the SFTR, SFDR and the, R the RTS. Um, with regard to the taxonomy, there are also um, at disclosures linked to the SFDR mm -hmm. as well. There is a, uh, a consultation that's just closed. The ESAs have just closed the consultation uh, on those disclosures rules. And what, well, the good news is that there will be a, a single rule book. So they'll, the disclosures um, that are linking the taxonomy and the SFDR, those will be uh, made in the same uh, in the same template and the rules will be found in the same RTS. But what that, but the timing, uh, of course, is uh, unclear as to when those disclosures will kick in because the yeah. SFDR, the RTS will first need to be finalized, as I just mentioned, yeah. um, hopefully by the summer. And then the commission will need to review the proposed, the ESA's repos proposal on the taxonomy re related amendments. So I would expect that that would be sometime after the summer break and exactly when those um, uh, disclosures would uh, be required in the first instance. Is, that's, that's not quite clear at the moment. Um, yeah, and then just to quickly talk about the uh, the, the corporate sustainability reporting directive, uh, because this, as when we when we think about the data and the, uh, the you know the data collection exercise that's coming, of course, there's a huge gap uh, that's recognized in the market at the moment. That uh, certain ESG, let's, let's call it reference data, is simply uh, not available. Mm. Uh, that because the issuers uh, are well, for a number of reasons, there's no obligation at the moment to re mm. to disclose this data in the form that's required by the SFDR. Um, where the data is disclosed, it's usually, um, you know, in unstructured um, uh, sustainability or um, CSR, corporate social responsibility type reports that, um, yeah, there's there's no, this, it's not standardized and uh, the data is kind of all over the place. And so what the 
EU is proposing with this new corporate sustainability reporting directive is to revise the existing NFRD and to bring many more corporates into scope. The, the scope will go from the current 11,000 EU companies to almost 50,000 companies. And importantly, it will demand that the data be disclosed um, in a standardized and digitized format to make it easier to use. Yeah, so, so I think I think I can stop there uh, with the uh, EU updates. Yeah, and I guess the other thing that I would add maybe to this whole thing then is that from the, within the fund management industry in Europe, we'll also have uh, hopefully a new template emerge in Q3. So the, the Findatics working group has been established um, to build out the European ESG template. Yeah, I think yeah, that's um, that's a really important point, Ronan. Yeah. So if you could tell us more about that, because uh, yeah. yeah, this this relates to kind of the data challenge that um, yeah. that I was just uh, describing. Yeah. So firms where so if you think about it, funds that are distributing need to communicate accurate information about their product, uh, so that people can can first of all comply with MIFID two product governance rule sets, but then also that world is now intersecting with 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 the ESG related kind of governance and oversight of product um, that comes in through the various directives and regulations that you've mentioned. And so this template is going to be quite important in both um, the fund management companies being able to communicate this information accurately to to investors and to distributors and to and to regulators indeed in, at the end of the day, uh, but also uh, the 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 uh, the complex nature of some investment products where, where products invest in other products, invest in other products or are wrapped by products where you have multi-manager or fund to fund structures and they all require kind of what I would call complex look through arrangements. And so the EET is going to be quite important in unlocking that challenge and the working group at Findatics have had a very good track record in, in solving similar industry challenges that we've had in the past that emerged around Solvency 2 and MIFID 2 and PRIPS. Uh, and so it's no surprise that that we will be getting this new template and it will, I guess, consign what we call EMT 3.1, that kind of quick fix that came out uh, earlier this year to address the level one requirements around SFDR. Um, so I'm expecting 3.1 version of EMT to be to be uh, disposed of once this, this becomes available. And I guess the other key point we're picking up is that the working group seems like it's going to avoid the the multi jurisdictional edge cases that that kind of permeate some of the templates that have emerged from those groups to date. Um, you know, quite how then the industry will deal with the the regional nuances, I'm not sure, but it will certainly simplify their role with with that kind of change in scope or this subtle adjustment of the mandate. So yeah, a lot a lot is happening, and I guess it's a case for everybody to watch this space carefully, watch the news carefully, stay in touch with your with your local uh, kind of source of, of knowledge. Um, so I guess, yeah, thank you for sharing your knowledge this morning, Mary. I think we we, we all benefit from 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 getting updates from the, the experts in their industry like yourself that are that are that are focused 100 percent on on monitoring all of this change and kind of making sense of it and communicating it very clearly back to the market. So thank you for that. Yeah, thanks, Ronnie. It's good talking to you.